KSI is one of the biggest YouTubers in the world. And when you think about YouTube boxing, he is one of the first people that you think of. But can he fight? How good is his boxing ability? And when he fights Tommy Fury, who's going to win that fight? And most people who review KSI's boxing ability or predict these fights have never been in a boxing ring before. But I had 106 fights. I won seven national titles, a European gold medal, and as well, I won an Olympic medal. So I think my views on this fight will be pretty decent. And as well, my prediction at the end will be very accurate. So let's take a look. To be honest, I've never watched KSI fight before, apart from the time that he knocked that guy out with the elbow. I've seen that and I'm going to talk about that as well. Let's start with the second Logan Paul fight because I don't want to go too far back into time because obviously he's improved since then. His first fight against Logan was 2018. So this guy has been boxing for around five years. And as far as I know, when these were happening, this was like the big takeoff of YouTuber boxing. Look at the crowd. Crazy how these two's business partners now. So he's orthodox, got that low left hand. And I think this is like KSI's third fight. Really stepping in with that jab to the body. Obviously Logan's taller than him, so he's throwing that jab to the body, trying to get him to drop his hands and then come and whip him over the top. KSI's got his hands very low, both hands. So he's obviously confident there. Yeah, he's got some nice feints, just very low hands. So is Logan as well. But we've got to take into account as well the magnitude of this fight. It's in a stadium with thousands of people, probably millions of people watching at home. The pressure's immense with these. And as well, they're both novices in here with very little experience. KSI's got good reactions. He's moving his head good. He's moving his feet good. But he's jumping in, getting a bit excited, trying to go for that knockout blow, trying to land them big power shots. Ooh, was that a knockdown? That kind of hit him on the back of the head. Let me see that again. Ooh, hits him on, looks like the back of the head. Logan does look in a little bit of trouble there, but the referees let him get straight back up. Logan's taking his time getting back up, so that possibly was a knockdown. When he's jabbing, he's really putting his head down low, kind of leaving him open for like an uppercut or like a hook. Oh, there's a big uppercut there. Oh, and he's knocked him down. Oh, and KSI's legs have gone. Wow, I didn't know this happened. The winner by split decision, K.S. Wow. This is an old fight, so let's move on to something a little bit more recent. This is Fierce Tempia, two fights later. Fighting a tall southpaw here. Well, I can see already KSI's improved a lot in them two years off. It's two fights later. But I'm noticing when he's throwing these punches, every punch is hard. He's got his hands down now, very comfortable in the ring. You can see that he's been definitely putting the work in, but he switched southpaw there, which was a pretty silly thing to do, and he got caught. Let's watch that again. It's like a step forward, coming square on. He walks into the other guy's jab. Yeah, it was a bit sloppy there, but this just shows me like how confident he is in the ring, which again, in front of this many people, at this lower level of a fighter, meaning his experience. Yeah, I'm impressed with his punching power here. I would like to see him set up the power punches before he like, tries to land them. But yeah, he punches hard. He's got good pressure. Now, before you think, Nah, Tony, he's useless. Look at Manny Pacquiao, look at Floyd Miller. We're not reviewing them. Reviewing a boxer with less than 10 fights. Look, he's got his hands down on his toes. Very comfortable in there. Oh, mate. That guy's not getting up there. No, he's not. Let's watch that again. Fainting, fainting, fainting. Throws a big right hand. He does that thing what I've just criticized him for where he's switching square on. And then he's stepping in with that lead left hook. Hits him right in the chin. And it's good night. Now let's move on to the Joe Fournier where he elbows him and puts him asleep. Oh, look at him. Look on there how confident he is. Now, you know, if you do criticize YouTubers at this level, like, oh, he kind of fight, he kind of fight. Like the can. Look at the confidence right here. Think if you know boxing, like I obviously do, and you think of someone who you know who's had, what's it, I think this is like his sixth or seventh fight. And think about how they are compared to this guy right here. Yes, he's been doing it for like five years now, but still getting in the arena full of people with this pressure that's on his back and the confidence is just crazy. <laughs> then as well, coming out with his hands right down like that. So that means he's so confident in his footwork. 
which he's got good footwork. You can see he's on his toes, keeping his feet apart, looking for that big, massive right hand before he's even established the jab. Again, looking for another big right hand. I would love to see him throwing some jabs there. That right hand again, the guys are complaining. Throws him to the ground. One thing that I'm noticing in KSI is like how much he wants it, how hungry he is. Now I know he's had so much success in his life in YouTube and in music. And you know, to have success in anything, you know, you've got to have that fight in you, that hunger in you. Not in a way where you're trying to knock someone out all the time, but you can just see right now he's determined and he wants to win. Now the guy is a professional boxer who's fighting in Joe Forney. I think he had like 10 fights or something. Look at how confident he is with that footwork there. It's kind of switching stances and then coming forward. Hands are low. So, you know, if you're a big puncher, he's walking forward into them punches. It's a very risky and dangerous thing to do. But he's fainting well. And when he is punching, he's bringing his head off that center line. But one thing I'm very impressed with is just how comfortable he is in there. He's like kind of doing what he wants to do. He's trying new things. <laughs> that was a crazy overhand right there, mate. What was that? What was that? Get behind your jab and then he'll throw it and then that might land. That's it. When he throws that jab, it's nice. Hands are a little bit low for my liking, but he's out of range. And what I always say is, if, if you're out of range, you can do whatever you want with your hands. You can put them behind your back if you want. It doesn't matter. It's just as long as you've got them up when you go into range. Or you've definitely got to have that head off the centre line when you go into range with your hands down. But it's still a risky thing. Now I think it's, I think the elbow is in this round. Oh, so there he's jabbing, bringing his head down and off that centre line. But like his eyes seem to be facing elsewhere when he's doing that, which is dangerous. See if he's bring his eyes off there, like his head down, so you can't really see. But he is looking for that big overhand right. But still, you should keep your eyes facing forward even when you're jabbing down. But again, he's brought his head down facing the floor. Now, if his opponent was upright and he threw that straight bump cross down the middle, that's the punch that will do the damage, that straight cross. Like here, leaning in, heads kind of facing the other way. And then this is where the other guy throws a looping right hand and hits him on the side of the head. Now, if you think where he's brought this hand all the way around here to try and loop it in, there, still landed. But if he threw the right hand from here where it should come, straight down the pipe there, it would have went straight onto his chin. But instead he kind of loops it around, which is taking the power out of the punch because KSI's hand's there. He's still landing the punch and still he's best punch of the fight. It would be better if KSI would stop putting his head down as he jabs, staying upright and keeping his eyes forward while he's jabbing. And that would avoid him being caught with them punches there. Now, if he was fighting Tommy Fury, who throws them long straight right hands, this here could be a major problem for KSI. And now that right hand's kind of slowed KSI down a little bit. Oh, but that was a lovely body shot. How did he throw that? Now that right there is a hard punch to land. Joe Fournier was moving away to his right, away from KSI's right hand. It took a bit of the sting out of the punch. If he was moving to his left and that landed, would have done some damage. I would love to see KSI working behind his jab a little more to have more success to set up these other punches because he's loading up that big right hand and there it's there, boom, huge. That was the controversial elbow there. So just let's watch that right hand again. So he does throw the jab, what I was talking about, and that really sets up that big swinging right hand, hits him right on the chin, great punch. Now let's get into this elbow, mate. Goes for the right hook, and as Forney is coming in, it kind of hits him with the elbow, which I've never seen in boxing like this before and doing that much damage. But it was an accidental elbow. Maybe the fight should have been called a no contest because of that, or even the disqualification, because it was an illegal blow that landed that ended up winning KSI the fight, but I don't know. What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Now, the thing about reviewing fights like this, I don't know much about the person in front of him. Like, was Logan Paul not ready for that fight? Was this fierce temper a terrible boxer to start with? Was Joe Fournier just too old and was he going to come back and win if that elbow never hit? I don't know. So one thing that I like to do to really be able to judge a fighter's boxing ability is look at their training. Look at their shadow boxing because anyone can look good hitting the heavy bag or on the mitts. But when it's shadow boxing, that's where I can really tell if he knows their stuff. So let's look at some of KSI's training. Let's see if we've got any shadow boxing. See if he's developing good habits with his shadow. First one that comes up, public workout. <laughs> I've got to see, I like it. I really like it. We see way too many fighters uh, 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 going through the motions, doing this 
stuff that I'm not a fan of. But right here, he's doing fight-specific stuff. He's really putting his body through it and pushing himself, bringing his hands back to his face. That's that little switch move he does with his feet there that I said earlier on that I didn't like, but then it proved me wrong because it worked and he finished the guy off with that combination. Shadow boxing with the cat ahead of the Tommy Fury fight. <laughs> That's not a great one for us to review his boxing skills. Here we go, he's on the noodles here. Got them low hands, which I'm a huge fan of, but it's working for him. And some fighters do this and have success with it. So this is some heavy bag work. There's really not much footage of KSI. Yeah, he's putting in that work. I love it. You know why I love this? I see this on my education videos all the time. If you want to get better at one thing, like what he's doing there, working on the hook, all you're going to do is work on the hook. And that's what they're doing in his training camp, blasting in that lead hook, which is developing strength and power behind it. So here we've got him on the paddles. Oh, that was that big looping right hand there that knocked Joe Fournier out. But I guess it was the elbow that landed, not the right hand. Boom. Now, do you agree with me when I see it? It doesn't look like this guy hasn't had that many fights, which is, wasn't like seven. Now, the thing with KSI, Logan Paul, Jake Paul, these are multi-millionaires. And they can hire the best team possible with nutritionists, strength trainers, the best boxing coaches, get the best sparring. And money's not a problem for that compared to where most fighters, even me, when I was fighting, I would struggle to do this. And I have to really think twice, is it worth me getting this massage today? Because... It costs me 40 quid. And because you're like that, you've got to adjust your way of thinking. Whereas for him, it's like, yeah, get me that massage. So now, after watching KSI, I am impressed and he's a lot better than I actually thought he was. But do I think he's got enough to beat Tommy Fury? Well, I'm going to talk all about that and give you my prediction. That might surprise you. But first, I want to talk about the sponsor of today's video, which is Four Sigmatic Think coffee. Now, if you're like me and you drink coffee every day, why would you not be putting the best coffee out there in your body? This organic coffee from Four Sigmatic is infused with lion's mane, which is a type of mushroom that's been scientifically proven to help with cognitive function and helping your memory, helping your focus. And this is my favorite type of coffee. And they've created a product called the Think Starter Pack, where you get inside some focus blend to help you give you extra clarity if you need it. Let's see if you're doing an exam or you just need to be really switched on for anything. And as well, I've added in there Think Vanilla Creamer, which gives your coffee a hint of flavor, but it also includes theanine, which prevents you from having that crash that we have from regular coffee. You know, when you're feeling at the top of the world, then it's like, oh, the afternoon, you're like, I'm so tired. This prevents that from happening. And this is available from Amazon, from Whole Foods. Or you can go to foursigmatic.com by clicking the link below. Again, if you drink coffee, why not drink the best there is? So, who do I think will win this fight with KSI and Tommy Fury? Now, before I watched them videos of KSI, I was always thinking Jake Paul was the superior of these YouTube fighters because he's got that experience. And Jake Paul had a very close fight with Tommy Fury. So I thought, well, Tommy Fury's gonna wipe the floor with KSI. But now seeing that, and also knowing just how determined KSI is to win in life, it kind of puts us on the fence a little bit. Tommy Fury is the more experienced boxer of the two because he's been in a boxing gym since he was a baby. KSI's got more experience fighting on a big stage, but that kind of doesn't matter. It comes down to on the night, in the ring, who's going to be the better man on the day? And even though I think KSI is way better than I thought, I'm going to have to go with Tommy Fury. No, scratch that. <laughs> I think KSI is more determined and he'd want it more than Tommy Fury. So with that in mind and how close it was with Jake Paul, I think I'm going to have to side with KSI. But then again, Fury is the, the full-time boxer. KSI's got all these other projects that he's working on now with his prime, with all of his different YouTube channels, with his music career. So is that just a big distraction for him where Tommy Fury's only got his boxing? So yeah, Tommy Fury. But then again, KSI's footwork and that power of that over and right. Oh, mate, I can't decide. Who do you think is going to win this fight? And also on that card, Logan Paul is fighting Dylan Dennis. But can Dylan Dennis fight? Well, I break down his boxing on this video right here. So click here and see if I think Dylan Dennis is legit. Click here. 